In 1843, the first program was written. It's been almost two centuries and we're still writing in languages made so it's easy for the computer to understand. The problem is that programmers spend most of their time reading code rather than writing. Then why are we still not writing in a language that's written for humans? As a computer science student, it's my duty to do what has already been done before. Stay and witness history being made. Today, I'm introducing three things. The first one is a revolutionary new generation programming language. The second is the democratization of programming. And the third is a personal teacher for any programming language. These are not three separate things. They are one. I'm calling it English+. Plus. Today, I'm going to reinvent how programs are written. Here is a simple program written in three popular programming languages. We get a number from the user and display it back. Looking at them, we can see a pattern. There is always text that is easy for the computer to understand. And sometimes there are comments explaining in plain English what is happening. What we are going to do is remove all of this text for the computer and leave only the comments. The result is English Plus, where the code is written for humans, not machines. This is a game. Behind the scenes it uses JavaScript with Phaser, a 2D game framework. This is the code in English Plus. If you have never programmed in your life and the code in front of you doesn't scare you, that for me is the democratization of programming. Here is the same code but for machines. A lot of the people I know that are not programmers have to interact with code. They are very smart people and have great potential in life. They can learn what an array or what a function is, but for some reason they get stuck at the basics. I came to the conclusion that what puts them off is how the text is written, not the meaning behind the text. The more subscribers this channel gets, the higher the quality of the videos will be. There are three major breakthroughs in English+. Plus. The first one is the structure of the code. It's not exactly plain English. It's more like a recipe. If you can follow a recipe for cooking, you can use English+. Plus. Declare a variable, then assign 10 to it, exactly like a recipe. The second one is how we call functions. In every other programming language, you type the function name and in brackets give values to its arguments if it has ones. Not anymore. What we call is not the function's name, but its description. If it has arguments, we replace them inside the description. A seamless, natural process, as it should have been from the very beginning. The third one is that you are allowed access to only what you understand. If the additional configuration file is empty, there is nothing you can do with English+. Plus. With other programming languages, you have access to everything. What will happen if we use code we don't understand? Of course it will break. The videos that are liked the most will get a second, much better part. The game I showed you earlier is from a tutorial for Phaser. I followed the tutorial in JavaScript and read everything they had to say about it. Even played around with the gravity for the jump. In the end, I had a simple game working, but I didn't learn anything. I just copy-pasted code and got a vague understanding of what's happening. Then I switched to English+. Plus. If the config file is empty, I don't have access to the code. And the way you build your config is by reading a lot of documentation and tutorials, so that you describe each new code block you use. I was very surprised by the time I finished the project how much I learned about how Phaser works. This is why English Plus is a personal teacher for any programming language. I have never experienced a process where the result of it is so apparent. Did you know that maintenance is the most expensive part of a program's life cycle, as it could be up to 90% of total costs? According to a quick Google search, Google is over 2 billion lines of code. Imagine having to work on that code base. Currently, the strategy is to make maintenance easier is by creating automated tests for the code, automating a lot of tasks, having code style, reviewing another person's work, writing clean code, finding bugs as early as possible, etc. The list goes on and on, but there isn't a single technique targeting the elephant in the room. We are working with text written mainly for the computer to understand. Do you remember I called English Plus the new generation programming language? Yes, there are generations, I learned that recently. 
The first generation are machine languages, literally zeros and ones. The second are assembly languages, where you get to play around with letters now. Then third generation languages, where you have variables, classes. There are a total of five generations. Do you notice a trend how the higher the generations we go, the further away we are from writing for a machine? Most popular languages are in the third generation. The fourth and the fifth are very different from regular programming, like SQL or Prolog, but we don't see them often. When a new startup shows up, they will not build a website with R. English Plus is what I would have liked the fourth generation to be. Most likely, if you look up who created a programming language, it will show you a computer scientist. I'm a computer science student, and I hope the work I do will be of value to others. And this is how I made English Plus in 12 days.